I was walking near where I lived and it was during lockdown and there was no one around me there were no cars or people and a man drove by me and he he stopped the car and he told me to get in um I didn't know him so I said no I'm good you know and I, I started getting really nervous um but then instead of driving away he kind of kept trying to talk to me and it wasn't it, the comments he made were really uncomfortable All right, good day. Thank you for joining us. My name is Kareem Smith, multimedia journalist at Barbados Today. And today I have with me virtually Mrs. Andrea Lowe, whose story recently has been making waves across the island, a very polarizing topic, the issue of uh, harassment, catcalling. Now, I just wanted to invite her to share her story with us personally. So Andrea, once again, thank you for joining us. You visited Barbados based on what we've read in December uh, on the Welcome Stamp Initiative, uh, which the government essentially has instituted to allow persons to come here and work remotely. You decided to leave in April, cutting that, that stay short. Tell me about the process that led to you coming here, choosing Barbados, and the circumstances that resulted in you cutting your trip short. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me and for giving me the opportunity to share my story. Uh, yeah, I, as you say, I arrived in Barbados in December of 2020. Um, and then I left at the end of April. Um, I came across the welcome stamp online. Um, I am from Hong Kong and based in Hong Kong and I read about it, uh, the Welcome Stamp Initiative, and I thought, what an amazing idea. It's really exciting um, because I'm a journalist and I write a lot about travel and food and drink and culture. I thought this is um, a good chance for me to relocate somewhere temporarily, work remotely and explore a region of the world that I've never been to before. I've never been anywhere in the Caribbean. So yeah, I decided to apply for it. And even after I had my uh, application approved, I still took some time to think about it because it's such a long way from home. That's just, it really is the other side of the world, um, Barbados from Hong Kong. So yeah, I, I eventually decided to go for it. So I arrived um, in Barbados in early December. What was your first impression? And how did we, within a short space of time, um, get to you feeling so uncomfortable here that you thought it best to leave? Well, my first impression of Barbados is obviously how beautiful it is. It's just, um, yeah, I think it's just unparalleled. Um, it's just such a beautiful place and everybody is so friendly. Um, you know, the famous Bajan hospitality, I got to experience it really as soon as I arrived. So I think you know, when I had arrived, COVID was very much under control. And then as we all know, um, there was a big cluster over the Christmas and New Year period. So, uh, and then, you know, that was followed by the curfew and the lockdown. Um, I think I took all of this, you know, in my stride um, with the COVID situation around the world. And if you choose to travel, you choose to relocate somewhere, you have to kind of, um, to a certain degree be prepared that the unexpected will happen but i think i i hadn't realized that catcalling and street harassment is such a you know it's considered part of the culture that was what was told to me because i would get really nervous whenever it happened to me and um i was there as a woman on my own so it was um yeah it was a lot to take but Initially, I had spoken to some local ladies who reassured me that it was largely harmless. And obviously, I was very lucky that I, in my time in Barbados, I was never physically harmed. So, yeah, so initially, I think I really just tried to calm down and understand that this is um, really what's um, considered kind of a part of everyday life. But then I think just as time went on, the situation really escalated. It went from 
kind of cat calls from people who were walking past me or drivers who were dri driving by me to kind of incidents of harassment on the beach where I'm, I, I tell, you know, there was one example I can think of this. There was a guy who was talking to me and moving really close to me and I said, I'm fine on my own. And then he seemed really upset and annoyed by it. And he kind of actually came even closer and sat next to me. It's things like that. I think I, I felt really kind of, not at ease with myself and I was always too scared to go out at night you know after dark and obviously we had the curfew but I I never I never kind of ventured outside outside alone and um yeah I think it was just um the anxiety was really building up and um eventually an incident took place near where I lived and I I felt so much anxiety that I felt like I, I didn't want to continue my time there unfortunately yeah. What would you consider to have been some of the worst case, worst case scenarios that you experienced? As in, what were the worst things that I experienced? Yeah, or what what were the things that were told to you that you consider to have been most uncomfortable? I think that. Well, the thing that really comes to mind is the incident that happened near where I lived, which I wrote about in my story recently, um, where I talked about why I left Barbados. Um, I was walking near where I lived and it was during lockdown and there was no one around me. There were no cars or people and a man drove by me and he, he stopped the car and he told me to get in. Um, I didn't know him. So I said, no, I'm good, you know. And I started getting really nervous. Um, but then instead of driving away, he kind of kept trying to talk to me and it wasn't, it, the comments he made were really uncomfortable. You know, he was saying things to me like, I'm trying to engage with you and feel like you're not engaging back with me and don't you want a husband? Um, and I think purely, you know, just with the anxiety that I was already feeling and the fact that there was no one around me, I think that made me, yeah, it made me really nervous and I kept replay, replaying it in my head. And then I researched how often this happens and that was how I ended up connecting with Renelle King, the local activist and the founder of Life and Leggings because a similar incident had happened to her. But unfortunately, when she refused the offer of a ride, um, the man, the perpetrator, he tried to drive her into the car. So I think for me, I, you know, I, I was really heartbroken to hear of what happened to Ronell and it it kind of made me think I, I don't I don't feel comfortable with staying here with so many incidents of harassment that have already happened and then with this particular incident it's just so close to home in every way. Um yeah, so I think that that's probably the worst one that I can think of. And the final question, since you made the ball set to to write about what you would have experienced um i believe on your own personal blog and in the business insider there's been quite a bit of chatter especially among younger barbadians on twitter and on instagram in some cases even on facebook and there there are quite a number of people who are supporting the the message that you have sent to us inadvertently um, and calling for what they believe are much needed changes. On the other hand, there are also quite a number of persons that have already dismissed you as an attention seeker, someone seeking to smear Barbados's good name as a tourism destination, or simply to increase your own personal profile as a journalist. How do you respond to these types of critiques mm, well okay so first of all i didn't i don't actually have a blog i wrote it for business insider i was commissioned to write it by the editors there i think what happened was that um because the article is paywalled some people probably cop um you know took the text and shared it um in other places so yeah so if you would like to read the original then it's on business insider um i yeah i had a lot of um worries before writing the story i think obviously it's very personal and 
um, I did think long and hard about, you know, how how I would do it if I should do it. But I think that, you know, I'm sharing what happened to me. Um, this is my journey. I went to Barbados intending to stay for a year. I didn't ever think that, yeah, the journey would unfold in such a way. Um, I think that the feedback since the story came out has been, I, I'm very overwhelmed by um, the support that I've received from women, not just in Barbados, um, but the Caribbean. I think it's, um, I have, it, it's hard to, it's hard to comprehend because it's on the one hand, I feel so glad to have connected with so many women um, who resonated with what I shared in my story. Um, but also I'm really sad to hear that, you know, they, the things that they've been through and I'm also sad to hear some of them say, this is something that women in the region really go through on a day-to-day -day basis. And, you know, they have been talking about it for years and now it's really kind of this discussion, this discussion is only being brought up again because a visitor to Barbados um, has brought it up. And I'm, because I am also from a place that used to be a British colony, Hong Kong was also a British colony. So I, I understand what it's like when you have, you know, an outsider coming in and, and um, you know, saying things about, about your hometown. You obviously have a natural sense of pride in where you live. Um, so yeah, so I think I, I, I think about those things and I also think about the fact that um, I, I shared my story, but I I wasn't in Barbados for very long and I'm obviously in a position of privilege to be able to sign up for the welcome stamp and be approved um, to go on it and to travel to Barbados in the pandemic. Um, and um, I don't wish to kind of take away from the voice of the women who, the women and the girls who do have to go through this every day. I just really just appreciate the support that they've given me. And I hope that I've kind of played a small part in um, hopefully people being inspired to make change. And I hope that we can continue this conversation as a collective.